and he was on the plane and he said to me, you know, you're my mother. And I said, you know what? I can't remember a lot of things, but I think <laughs> I would know I that. <laughs> There's that. something wrong. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome to Tea with Paul G. My hot tea hottie today is the perfect example of what the show is about. Doing what you love, doing good for others, and having fun while doing it. She is an actress and philanthropist, and her work on TV and her work with charities has earned her a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, professionally speaking, her career dispels this Hollywood notion of 15 minutes of fame. She's been playing Esther Valentine on The Young and the Restless for 40 years and counting. Equally impressive, she has been a flight attendant for the same amount of time. Her charity work runs the gamut from serving food at a Los Angeles shelter to serving tea in Canada to support those with motor disorders. And in spite of all these things that she has going on, she still finds time to have fun. So, Miss Kate Linder, mm -hmm. without further ado, it is tea time. Oh, yay. Welcome to the show, my dear. Thank you, Paul. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. How's your Earl mm. Grey? Good, right? That's really good. Thank you. I was very happy to hear when you chose Earl Grey as your flavor because that's my favorite. Really? Is it? Yeah. Is it your favorite too? Yeah. I have it every day. Wow. I diverge every once in a while, but uh, do you have any other favorites or is it well, always I, Earl Grey? I like it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Is it always black or you do... Yeah, I try because I try not to have the calories. I understand. Here we are. <laughs> that's me. Here we are in front of three cameras <laughs> and, and uh, do they see the calories? We're always thinking about that as performers, aren't we? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I would like for you to talk about a little bit. You've had a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame since 2008. Yeah. Though a lot of people aren't aware of some of the like requirements. It's not just a thing. It, it's a big deal, and they there's an expectation. Can can you explain? Well, that I mean, a it's a huge deal. That's why I think I need to. I go there periodically, make sure it's still there. <laughs> I, I can't believe it's there in the first place. <laughs> um, but it has to do not only it, with your whole career, and it has yeah. to do with what you do as far as giving back as mm -hmm. well. And I, I, a lot of people don't know that. I think the, the general idea is, oh, it's, it's glamour, it's a celebrity, you reach a certain status, you get a star. No, there, it's a great expectation that you're giving back. It's not just about being a celebrity, it's the good that you do. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that awesome charity that you do in Canada? It's March of Dimes Canada, and I am ambassador to their Conductive Ed program. And it's an amazing program because there'll be kids that when I first see them, they can't even sit up. And then when I've gone back there the next year and see the same kids, and now they can walk and they can move and, and, and talk and do all kinds of things. So it, it's just so great for, right. for all of them and, and for their families. And so I'm honored to be connected with them. It's nice to see like the, the work, the charity work at work, right? It, that it is actually making a difference and going somewhere. Well, what we do is, it, uh, is we have teas, which is so perfect, hey, right? Yeah, uh, cheers. Bring up Young and the Restless, uh, my castmates who are, who are great. And we go up to Canada. I was doing three a year, so Vancouver, uh, Calgary, and Toronto. And, um, and it, it's great, and because no one's paid, you know, we, my friends, my castmates do this out of the goodness of their heart. They they come up and they spend their weekends and and giving back, and that that means so much to me. You've probably inspired them because you've been, I think, close to twenty years. Is that right? Well, they actually, it's twenty two years. We've been doing raised over two million dollars, and Amazing. just uh, uh, makes me really really happy, and I'm so grateful to Young and the Restless because they've afforded me the opportunity yeah. to give back. Lovely catching up with you as always, but I think we should move into our next segment, which is Spill the Tea. <music> Do you remember the first time we met? Well, we met, well, we've seen each other, you know, at a Television lot. Academy yeah. at different events. Yeah. And there's been a lot of events going on. And, um, and we were talking and you were telling me I don't know how it started, but we started talking about this show that you were doing mm -hmm. at, at T. And I went, 
and the light bulb went off yeah. in my head and I said, well, I do these teas in Canada and, uh, and bring up Young and the Russell's people. And, and so I just thought that would be perfect. And, and fortunately, you agree with me. Oh, <laughs> so that, absolutely. So that's yeah. good. I thought that was such a, a lovely thought you had and, and gesture to, to be involved because, you know, we're, we're still really getting to know each other, even though we have great conversations. We've seen each yeah. other at a lot of events, as you said. But see, what you're doing, you're about, you know, giving and giving mm -hmm. back. And if everyone just gave back a teeny little bit, I mean, can you imagine yeah. what the world would be like, what everything would be like? So, yeah, I'm always open to that. And I, I'm out just about every night doing some, you know, giving back as, as much as I can. Because I feel so fortunate. I mean, here I am. I get to act on the number one show. This is something I always wanted to do. I didn't want to be anything that little girls want to be, like nurses, uh, teachers, mothers, flight attendants. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to be any of that. I just wanted to to act and my, uh, you know, I told my parents that, you know, all the time and they went, ay, 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 you know, hopefully, <laughs> great. I mean, they were really supportive and they gave me the dance lessons and piano lessons, all that. but they, did, you know, we're talking a long time ago and they didn't have a clue how to, how to help me do that. So just have to take, I just feel like sometimes take one step forward and two steps back and I just keep going. But that's, that's one of the interesting things to me. I think people have this idea that if, if you live in L.A., that everybody works in the business and, you know, but I, I encounter, it's funny, I encounter, even in this town, there's a lot of people that don't have a clue about what we do, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and there was no one in my family in the business. Mm -hmm. And it's just a really difficult business. And you have to want it. Well, I tell people, if you, if you, you have to want this more than anything. Because if you don't want it that badly and you're not willing to work that hard, then I always say, then do yourself a favor and do me a favor because I don't want you in my business if you're not will ready and willing to do that. Exactly. Yeah. You still take singing still, lessons, acting classes. Oh, which I'm still is, in class yeah. and still voice lessons, dance lessons. I, because it, it's a business, okay, show business, yeah. right? It's the business of show. And that's what it is. And you have to treat it as such. I mean, I call it working the program. So you can't look at what's ahead. I mean, you can't say, oh, if someone says, well, I want to be out there. I want to have a star. I want to be famous. But you can't look at it that way. I say, well, I'm just working and doing the best I can and working as hard as I can. And you keep going. You want it that badly, then it will, it will come to you. But you can't push for that because then you, you kind of like, Push it away. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's it's about you know you, what you're saying. You, you put in the work. You put in the mm -hmm. time, and and then and then it's meant to be. It's it's not forcing it. But I mean, when people ask me for advice on well, how do you, you know this that I, you know I I tell them well, it sounds like you really just want an Oscar. You know, I said, do what you love. You know, like something passionate and go for that. But because if if you're just doing it for the Oscar. Who knows? And, and that's, you know, whatever your motivation is, I'm not judging it, but I feel like, as you said, it's a tough business, this show business, and you got to have that burning passion. Oh, to yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of people come and go. I see, because a lot of people, I've seen them believe their own press. Mm. And for me, that's, you know, I love what I do. I'm so fortunate I don't have to press the snooze <laughs> button, you know, yes. that I can't wait yeah. to get up and, and go to work. I can't wait to come here and be doing this with you. I mean, I, I, I love what I do. It shows. <laughs> it, it, it really does. And, and, and the company you keep, there's a lot of love there. You know, uh, it, it, it's impressive. I, I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about you. Everyone adores you. Everyone oh. knows of you. It's, it's amazing. Like there's, there have been a couple of times where I, I run into you at events and just, it's, it's overwhelming. Like I want to, I, I want to like just break down in tears because I'm like, I love this woman. I don't know what it is about you. There's just this. Uh, that means so much to me, Paul. I mean, that makes me cry because I, I that means a great deal to me. Believe me, I, I'm, I'm honored to be doing this with you, and I'm, I'm oh. honored to be. Hmm on you know what I what I'm doing and and to give back I'm also a celebrity spokesperson for the ALS Association and work a lot with the Golden West chapter in fact 
I did the ice bucket challenge on my star oh, <laughs> one, awesome. which was wild. That was pretty wild. It's strange what you can find on YouTube. I mean, people send there these me days. things and I go, wow. How did they find that? I don't even remember that I did. And just kind of, you know, doing a little prep work to, to sit down with you today. I, I found some fun things on YouTube. And we're kind of circling back to you've been dancing since you were three years old. And I didn't know that Young and the Restless was willing to, like, take a leap and, like, let's, let's have Esther do a song oh. and dance number. How much fun was that? Oh, my gosh. That was the Masquerade Ball. And I loved doing that. I did, uh, I did Everybody Ought to Have a Maid. From yeah. funny thing happened on the way to the forum, and uh, it was Mike Denny. He was directing at the time. He came down to the studio, dance studio, and saw you know all the moves, so he knew how to direct the cameras. And uh, I loved it. So then during the pandemic, when they couldn't, when we were shut down for a while, and they were going back and showing, you know, old older shows, they showed that again, yeah, and I was wow. So. It's exciting. Tell us a little bit more about like, how did you turn a one day job into a 40 year career, 40 years and counting? In the so. beginning, I really hardly had any lines. So I thought, well, I've got to do something. If I, if I, if I do something then I, they don't like it, I'm going to be gone. And if I don't do anything, I'm going to be gone. So I, I started making her man hungry. So every time Whoever was at the door, because I answered the door all the time is what I did. So whoever, if it was the plumber, yeah. if it was Victor Newman, whoever it was, it was like, you know, e Esther just went gaga, like who was at the door. And that. then one day I, I asked props, I said, listen, can you give me um, a spoon, a wooden spoon with melted chocolate? And they're looking at me like, uh, okay. And, and so because in the script it just said Esther answers the door. So... I took the spoon, I had the chocolate, I'm trying to answer the door, I've got chocolate, you know, that kind of thing. Um, one day, it said Esther goes out and gets the mail. So I went out, got the mail, got a letter, held it up, you know, look around, make sure no one's looking at me or looking, and put it in my pocket. And they never mentioned it uh -huh. because it wasn't in the script. Right. But I always did, whatever I did, I always did it during blocking, which means camera blocking. We do the scene so that the cameras know where to move or where the, mm -hmm. what we're going to do. So I never surprised them. But one day, uh, this is kind of funny, um, I did this thing where I was dusting and I sneezed. And so they're going, and I did it during camera blocking. So they're going, cut, and I'm going like, and they said, okay, well, we will do that again. And I said, oh, and they said, well, why? You don't want me to sneeze? And they said, oh, we thought you really sneezed. So it was, you know, mm. that kind of thing. That's so. a good actress, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is a good actress. They bought the sneeze. Because <laughs> how do you feel about, like, in the script when you see, like, sneezing, laughing? Like, I know for, for some performers, it's a, it's a block. I always see it as an opportunity, crying, like, all those. It's, I like those things. That's what we do. Right. Well, you know, there's a lot of people will cross those out because they mm -hmm. don't want to see what it says. But, you know, the writers work really hard, and they plan and they've been out writing our show i mean actually next year's gonna be our 50th anniversary wow. so they've been writing our show and they will agonize maybe over a certain word or what they want you know to be said yeah. and it's my job to bring the character to life it's not my job to write or rewrite my scene so i try to do it exactly as written because that's what i know they want and and some of the things you mentioned uh, of sorts, uh, it feels like that, you know, there's opportunity in the script to embellish a little without taking away their intention of what the right. scene was. And you yeah. sounds like you made some wise choices. Obviously, they kept bringing you back in 40 well, years. I mean, I don't know if I could get away with that now <laughs> in this day and age, but I asked for, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, my God, you know, the, with the headphones and everything. I mean, we don't even have those anymore. Uh, uh -huh. You know, the radio. The, like a Walkman? Walkman, yeah. thank you. I mean, we don't even have them. We don't, I don't even know the name. I mean, who has a Walkman anymore? They don't even have them. But then they People did. People in uh, Silver Lake, I think. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah, they probably got a few. So, uh, and so I put that on and I'm dancing around, dusting, and you know, that wasn't in, in, written anywhere. Yeah. But, but, uh, but, but you, they let me do it. And you, and, and you really developed a character. Well, Bill Bell, back then, too, he, he didn't like comedy. He didn't 
he didn't really like that. He came to me one day, he said, I know exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. He said, and it's okay, but don't you go too far. Because he didn't want, All you know, right. because it was, you know, he was telling a story, he was telling a story. Yeah. And, uh, but fortunately, he ended up liking it. So. Loving it, yeah. I'd say. Um, but it, it's funny you say that. He didn't, he wasn't crazy about the comedy, but I mean, hilarious moment uh, in, in the flashback episode. Uh, Esther walks in and, you know, what is that question she asked? Are we having a lovely day? Or, are we all in our places with sunshiny faces yes. or something? I Shut mean, up, Esther. You know, in all, sync. It's, yeah. I cracked up um, out loud. I, lo I was so honored because for my 40th anniversary, they had this episode yeah. it, and you can still see, you can pull it up. And it, I was so honored because they showed all these flashback scenes and scenes from 40 years ago, scenes from, they showed like uh, the main titles, how Esther looked, how I looked during yeah. all these years. And it was, I couldn't believe it. I was so honored that they did that. The thing about that flashback episode too, it, it was a great uh, thing to do for the 40th anniversary, obviously. But did, were you aware that like some of the fans started thinking like, what's this about? Like, is she leaving the show? Is this a send off? I think it was a great celebration, 40, 40th anniversary, but I'm glad that you say now, you, you say 40 years and counting, you don't plan on going anywhere. Oh no, anyway. I don't believe in retirement. I, I don't think it's, that's me. I can't speak for how other people feel and if they feel that's right for them, that's good. But uh, I think you have to have a reason to get up in the morning. Yeah. You have to have a reason to keep going, move forward. And so for me, they're going to have to drag me out of there. I'm not going on my own volition. Let's put it that way. Well, I, I, you have my vote of support behind that one. Like, don't don't Thanks, go anywhere. Paul. Keep keep doing your Thanks. thing. I like that quote you have about retirement. You said you don't believe in retirement, but also with the flight attendant job, because you've been doing that for a while. I always felt if I could do both jobs really, really well, then mm -hmm. I will keep doing them. And you can't forget who you are, because I've seen a lot of people believe their own press. So you can't right. forget who you are. When one day I'm serving coffee at, or tea at 35,000 feet, <laughs> another day I'm on the set, yeah. another day I'm here with you. Yeah. And so I've always thought, Okay, as long as I can keep doing them, I, I will. And I've also, it's been great because I've met so many viewers and fans from the show on the plane. I've had amazing stories and things that have happened. Um, in fact, one day I was walking up and, you know, up and down the aisle and there was this woman, she was looking at a, a soap magazine, I believe it was Soap Opera Digest, and she was, She's had it open and she was looking at it and she's looking at me and she was like, but she didn't say anything. And I, I walked back. So it, finally, I mean, usually I wouldn't say anything, but I couldn't stand anymore. And I sure. said, I said, excuse me, but could I see that? Because I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> and she went, right. is, is that you? And I went, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, just had great stories, yeah. great stories. I had a guy from, oh my gosh, uh, from Turkey. And he was on the plane and he said to me, you know, you're my mother. And I said, you know what? I can't remember a lot of things. <laughs> I think I would know I would that. Definitely remember <laughs> There's that. something wrong. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. You do, my, my mother does your voice in oh. Turkey, you know. Oh, so I went, wow. wow. So I've just had, you know, great things happen and get to meet uh, a lot of, a lot of people. It's like doing a personal appearance on the on the airplane, so yeah. that's good too. That's fun. Yeah. As far as retirement goes, so you're not retiring, but the original costume was retired, but found a second home. Yeah. The Hollywood Museum. Oh, Paul, I'm so honored. It's at the Hollywood Museum, which is in the old Max Factor building, and so a it's a huge honor for me. I mean, it's on an exhibit there, so it has my my uniform, yeah. my cap, my apron. My first two scripts, so they're 40 wow. years old. I uh, has Are my there notes that you yeah, because I wrote Love on it. them and yeah, it, and people I mean, can read that. Oh my gosh, they're falling apart. They're 40 years old. I mean, I thank goodness I had them, yeah. and I thank goodness I could still fit in the costume of wardrobe. Course you keep I don't know about fit. that. You look but, fantastic. But I'm just so honored that yeah. that it's there, so you can still see it. Yeah. It's, it's it's huge for me. I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> Miss Kate, would you like to share with our viewers what 
what's the best advice you've ever been given? Well, I, I've been given, you know, a lot of advice. My mom, who is amazing, she's 97, and she's incredible. And I, I met uh, her once. Yeah, she's Sweetheart. so, so great. And she's always said to me, my parents always said, you can do anything. You can make anything happen. You can do anything you want yeah. as long as you work hard enough and as long as you don't give up. So I, I don't give up. And you know, no matter, and people say no to me, I'll just have to find another way to ask the question. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but I just keep going. But there was one funny thing that, that Jeannie Cooper, who played my boss, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Chancellor, taught me a long time ago. So we're talking about 40 years. And we would go on a personal appearance and she said to me, look, when we're at lunch, don't order anything hot. I said, what? She said, just order a salad, a cold sandwich. Don't order a hamburger. Don't order anything hot. And I said, why? She said, because while we're eating, people will come up. And they'll come up to the table. And you know, fans, and they'll want an autograph. They'll want to take a picture. And then your food will get cold. And, and <laughs> I, and I, uh, I, that's always made me laugh, and I, because I, I am so honored that anybody that will come up or talk to me or that watches this show, and I will always, always, always give them the time and take pictures, of whatever you know they need. So, but I, I've always remembered that. <laughs> always makes me laugh. I know you're telling the truth because not only do you give the time for pictures, everything, but I mean. You even took the time out to call a fan who was sick. Well, it happened a number of years ago, but okay. I, uh, but a, a letter, uh, you know, pe uh, so this woman wrote a letter to me, and she said her her sister was really ill, and would I send her a picture? And by the time I got the letter and everything, I looked at, it, I said, oh my goodness, you know, I, so I called. This is how long ago it was. I called information. Oh, okay, and so I, it was a minute. Yeah, and I and she lived in Smith City, Kansas. I'll never forget. And I yeah. I got her number. Wow. And I called her, and I thought, well, she's not going to know who Caitlin is. So I said, hi, you know, this is Esther, you know, from Young and the Restless, and and I'm just oh, because it was her birthday, and I, I said I'm just calling to tell you happy birthday, and so we talked for a while, and she said. You know, I'm really sick. I said, I, 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 I know, yeah. but you've just got to keep going and, you know, you know, hang in there. I talked to her for quite a while. So after that, her, her sister wrote me and she said, oh, my gosh, the doctors can't believe it, you know. I mean, she was better for, you know, a while. And unfortunately, she, she did uh, pass away. But I was in contact with the family for, uh, for a lot of years. And they would keep in contact with telling me the kids, you know, in college or what was happening with them. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, I can make this woman feel good for even a second? How can I not do that? Right. I have to do that. If, I, if I'm in the position to, to be able to make her feel better, even for a little bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that was amazing. That's that heart you have, <laughs> you know. Well, um, it's... it's, it's you know, I, I'm, it's a huge honor. It's an honor for me to be doing this. It's an honor for me to be playing this character for all these years. It's an honor for me to be here. Look what you're doing. You're taught, you have this incredible show that you're doing and talking Thank about you. giving back and everything. And, and so it's great to be part of it. it really is. I appreciate you saying that. And you have just given us the perfect segue to give you a chance to earn some money for a charity. Oh, okay. So we are going to move on to our charity segment. You'll be playing our 50-50 game. Now, we we'll oh. give you 50 seconds to earn $50 for a charity of your choice. And who are you playing for? The Lupus Foundation, because I know several people that have lupus. And it's a, you know, yeah. they need to find a cure. For our viewers watching that may not be familiar, tell us about the work that they do. It's research. Well, they do. Towards they the have cure. research and uh, and help people and caregiving. And yeah. um, I've done something where I was their grand marshal for their walks. They have walks, yeah. and uh, so it's a, it's a really good organization. Awesome. Well, I hope that we can get you to uh, get all uh -oh, of. Oh, don't the ask me anything hard. Well, I, I don't. <laughs> I, here's the thing. I don't think it's hard. It's it's fun stuff. Okay. But. Um, I'll let you know. So okay. uh, I'm going to get 50 seconds on the clock, please. Okay. And uh, 
the time won't start until I finish my first question for you. Until I answer it. <laughs> well, right, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> She's okay. going to answer them all. Uh, okay. No timer. Okay. Um, but uh, so I thought it'd be fun because 40 years and counting as Esther Valentine who, you know, had her start as, as a maid and she's, you know, having a, a arc and she's living her life now. Uh, what if I ask you questions about other famous TV maids? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. let's see how it okay. goes. And if you want to just skip one right away, we'll move on. I'm going to give you hints if you okay. need it. You say pass if you want me to come back, time permitting, because okay. um, we want you to win today too. Okay. And we want the Lupus Foundation of America to win. Here we go. Who played Florence, the sass-talking maid on the classic TV show, The Jeffersons? Marla Gibbs. Yes. And you know what? Oh, wait, the oh, clock's well, ticking. We oh, I can't tell That's you okay. afterwards. Okay, uh, go ahead. In the Jetsons cartoon, what was their robot maid's name? Uh, Rosie? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What? Rosaria Inez Consuelo Yolanda Salazar was Karen Walker's maid on what hit sitcom revolving around a gay man and his female best friend? Oh. Will and Grace. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> on Frasier, the spunky English maid was tasked with looking after the title character's father, but eventually married his son, Niles. Daphne. Yes, Daphne. Okay, not quite a maid. Alfred Pennyworth acts as a butler to what Gotham City billionaire? He has where he's a mask. Uh-huh. He's, he's oh, Batman. Ma yes, Batman. Awesome. Let's see. You got all five, so Whoa! that deserves a high five. Yay! $50 for the Lupus Foundation wow. of America. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, since that went so well, I think we've done some good. Now let's have a little fun, because that's part of our mantra, too. I was thinking it might be fun, since Esther's known for her feather duster, and you have that awesome picture of you receiving your uh, star on the Walk of Fame, and you got the feather duster, uh -huh. the iconic one. I thought we should you know, kind of look at uh, feather dusters through the years. And I am happy to review these items with Kate Linder, AKA Esther Valentine. So this, uh, this kind of looks familiar, oh, doesn't it? What yeah, do this is a baby one. It is a baby one. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't have that Y in our budget yet. No, so no, we're starting actually, small. No, actually, the real one is at the museum, at the Hollywood Museum. It should be, with the That's script, with is. the costume. Yeah. 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 So what do you, what do you think of that one? It looks good, right? Oh, I it's, think it's, it's perfect. It's a baby version. I think it's perfect. And then, of course, we get a little more, I guess, I don't know, oh, I'm not wow. sure what's going on there. Nice color. Blue, wow. It's got a Esther thing going could, on. Yeah. yeah. Would, she, would Esther like blue? It's like a... Listen, Esther was terrible at cleaning. She used oh. this so she could eavesdrop. So <laughs> people thought she was dusting, but she really Just was getting an earful. Because Mrs. Chancellor said to her, you're a terrible, terrible, you're a terrible housekeeper. I, on that subject, <laughs> I feel like that you sort of made that an iconic thing where that, you know, people have seen you do that and then want to play the maid as like the, the nosy, like, mm, what's going on over here? <laughs> do, you, do, do you think that at all? Do you oh. want to you take credit for that? I don't know, but I'm honored if that's true. I, I, I feel like it's feasible. <laughs> um, so you've got that one, I've got this oh, one. Okay. And I think to mix things up, we ought to take a look at how far we've come with things, right? Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you ever okay. see one of these compressed air dusters? Esther needs that. Oh What's my gosh. Do? You can use it on keyboards. It's, oh it's, yeah, you know, yeah, you on can computers. Take a look. Oh yeah, it's, it's oh, great. Yeah. I, um, oh cool. You know, um, you got that Batman question. I am a big geek and I own it and I collect like comic book statues oh, and stuff cool. like that. I love that stuff. These actually come in very handy for cleaning around statues because, you know, they've got intricate parts and you don't want to break it and sometimes this might snag something and pull a little delicate piece off. This is perfect. Okay. So, you want to give it a shot? Uh-oh. Okay, so... Yeah, well, just squeeze just... that trigger and see. It see? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I like it. I can dust it. Everything like the dance, everything. I love it. That's perfect. It says, do not shake. Do not do shake. Not shake. Do and not shake that. I'm I'm not sure exactly behind about the science behind it, but like if you like hold it down too long, the can starts to get really cold. Oh. But I, I like the cold because when when we're under these lights like this, yeah. sometimes it's a nice yeah, little give a little <laughs> shot there. Yeah. You know. Look, but, that's uh, great. Um, I'll have to get that. Yeah, I appreciate you reviewing these <laughs> items with me. Yeah. Kate, thank you for being here. But before we let you go, we are going to have you do a little publicity. <laughs> So 
tell everybody what you would like them to see of previous work. Uh, obviously, you're still working on YNR right now. And uh, is there anything upcoming that you want people to be on the lookout for? Well, uh, Paul, like you said, I mean, I've been on Young and the Restless for 40 years and counting. So yeah. you have got to stay tuned and keep watching. And I, um, in a film that's not out yet, but hopefully soon, called Shriver. Okay. And it's Kate Hudson and Don Jan Johnson and Michael Shannon. So I'm I excited about that to come out. You know what I love? It, it's, it's, at this point, it's second nature to you. It's so natural. You, you couldn't put it down once you had it in your hand. <laughs> Yeah. I hold this desert not <laughs> Try it out of my hand. Don't it's an extension of your hand. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. it. Kate, yeah. thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's thanks, been a pleasure. Paul. As always, I I really do appreciate it. You are lovely as always. <laughs> and the last segment we have is our audience participation. We hope you enjoyed watching today. Uh, thank you for that. If you like, subscribe, and comment. We would like you to comment how you think our guest today, Kate Linder, has inspired my wardrobe. Whoever gets it right, we will choose from all the correct answers and we'll send you a special prize before the next episode airs. So thank you again and we will see you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm.